on this week's episode of Bayou Wild TV. This is the breeding pond. Um, this pond is stocked with the adult alligator snapping turtles. Late May to early June, they will come out of the water onto the land and lay their eggs. So here are some eggs that, that just starting to hatch. And here are uh, some turtles that came out of the eggs and they're ready to, to be moved to the water. So these turtles, these are the two-year-old turtles that um, have been tagged and uh, we uh, have a permit from the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and we'll be releasing these turtles into the wild. Let's get them in. Yep. All go, right. go swimming. All right, guy. Have a happy 98-year life. Hopefully this will increase the population of the wild alligator snapping turtle. Closed captioning is brought to you by Global Outdoors. Find your next adventure and share your experiences with others by downloading the Global Outdoors mobile app or visiting globaloutdoors.com. Every day, we strive to preserve traditions that have spanned generations. Around every turn of the bayou, Mother Nature reveals unique people, places, and experiences. And the bounty of animals and fish. Well, in Louisiana, we just call that land yak. I'm Don Dubuque. I'm Chris Lacoste. I'm Captain Martha Spencer. Join us as we document the adventure sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. We're here in St. Amon at the Louisiana Alligator Snapping Turtle Foundation with Ben Nakan. A Cajun turtle man, they call him. Ben, what's going on today? Don, we got some baby alligator snapping turtles that we're ready to release into the wild. Come on. Let's don't keep them waiting. Let's go. Let's go. Looking like it came right off the set of a cheaply made Godzilla movie, the alligator snapping turtle has been the subject of Bayou myth as well as menus, and once a common sight in Louisiana markets. But a declining population due to overharvest and habitat loss, in 2004, the state took action to ensure the future of renewable populations by outlawing commercial harvest, allowing only a restricted recreational harvest and encouraging a hatch and release program. And that's what Ben Nakan has created at his St. Amant home. <laughs> Years ago, I, I started catching the turtles, and, and, and I'm a hunter and a conservationist, and um, so we, we deer hunt, we alligator hunt, and we would trap alligator snapping turtles, and, and, and you know, in South Louisiana, that, that's, a, that's a good dish, turtle sauce pecan, turtle soup. Uh, over the years, I, I started to realize that the, the numbers were dropping. I started doing some reading and some research, and I started to realize that other states made it illegal to catch alligator snapping turtles. Um, so at one point many years ago I caught a 90 pound turtle and uh, I, I didn't want to kill it to eat it and, and I decided that I wanted to start breeding them and um, release the babies into the wild once they reach two or three years of age. This is the breeding pond. Um, this pond is stocked with the adult alligator snapping turtles and uh, in the springtime the adults, uh, they'll mate, and then uh, late May to early June, 
that will come out of the water onto the land and lay their eggs. He loves his turtles. They're like his pride and joy. And I think he enjoys spending time with them and doing stuff with them. And he does love his family helping him out. I am OJ knocking in and today I'm just showing y'all how to find out where the trapping turtle nest. So if you look right up in here, you can see where the mother would have most likely uh, held on with her two front paws in order to hold herself steady so she could dig out with her two hind legs and lay her eggs about where this flag is at. So when I started the project, we were getting one or two nests a year. And then over the years, that grew to three or four nests. And, and then uh, we, we, we moved and we, we got the fence and um, we did a matching grant. Uh, I put up 5000 and then the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, they matched what I put up and they gave me a grant and we put the fence and then so we caught more turtles and then the, the project expanded to what it is today. Coming up next. So here are some eggs that, that just starting to hatch. And here are uh, some turtles that came out of the eggs and they're ready to, to be moved to the water. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come. Whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. Continuing this week's show, at his home in St. Amant, Louisiana, Ben Knockan and his family have turned a hobby that started many years ago into a full-time commitment. Ben, what's going on today? Don, we got some baby alligator snapping turtles that we're ready to release into the wild. Come on. Let's don't keep them waiting. Let's go. Let's go. Ben offered us a tour to see firsthand how he breeds, hatches, and raises Louisiana snapping turtles in an effort to repopulate their declining wild population. Um, these are wild turtles. They're not pets. Uh, we try and keep this project as wild as we possibly can uh, because we do plan on releasing the hatchlings uh, at two years old into the wild. So hopefully this will increase the population of the wild alligator snapping turtles. What we're doing there is we're watching one of the mature turtles feed. Got a piece of fish and he's working it in those willow branches for some reason, maybe trying to tear it and get a piece off he can swallow. Um, sometimes when we feed him, we'll see a little increased activity. Uh, but other than that, you really you don't see him very often at all. So Ben has spent May and June collecting eggs out of that pond. Ben, after you got the eggs, how do we get to the hatchling process? So we take the eggs and we will put them in the buckets um, full of perlite and we um, add a little water to the perlite for the moisture and uh, the eggs will incubate. It usually takes about 90 to 100 days before the eggs start to hatch. Uh, we monitor the temperature um, because with the alligator snapping turtles, the, the cool temperatures around 78 degrees will produce mostly males and the hotter temperatures around the 84 degrees will produce mostly females. And uh, we, we want to try to produce mostly females so when we return these turtles to the wild and they start breeding, it'll help uh, the population now. And we, uh, we can adjust the temperatures in, in this room uh, to keep it uh, pr pretty moderate, around 84 degrees usually. And what's the survival rate on the egg? So to have a good uh, program, you usually want to shoot for 80% uh, successful rate on the hatchlings. From the time you put them into the bucket to the time they hatch, what's the average of time length? Usually it takes about 90 to 100 days uh, before they start hatching. 
and uh, sometimes it'll take two or three days for the full nest to, to hatch. And so from here, we go out to the ponds, to the tubs. That's correct. So what are we looking at here, Ben? So here are some of the, the hatchlings. Um, these turtles in here, they just hatched uh, about three weeks ago. Um, so we have them in the water and uh, we're gonna raise these for two years uh, until we release them into the wild. And uh, in this water, we have uh, some heaters and we are uh, keeping the, the temperature of the water about 72 degrees uh, so these turtles will eat and, and grow. And what's their diet during this period of two years? Uh, so here uh, we, we do feed them um, protein pellets, but we also give them some uh, food that they're going to eat in the wild, such as minnows, baby crawfish, uh, some vegetation like acorns, uh, water lilies, and we also give them some fruits and vegetables. It's kind of like preparing them for life in the wild as opposed to captivity. You know, Correct. We don't, we don't want to just give them protein pellets because once we release them into the wild, they're, they're no not going to have pellets. protein pellets. So they have to learn to, to eat the, 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 the minnows, the fish, and well, the vegetation. That's mm -hmm. correct. You know, when I first heard about the Louisiana Alligator Snap and Turtle Foundation, I said, wow, look at what this one guy has done. And, you know, the Alligator Snap and Turtle has been endangered. It's been taken off the commercial list. We still fortunately are able to take them recreationally here in Louisiana. And without the work from this one guy, I'm not sure we'd still be able to do that. So John Richards uh, in, in Missouri, he, he's been breeding alligator snapping turtles for over 20 years and uh, he's given me a lot of help with the guidance on uh, digging up the eggs, how to find the nest, what temperatures to keep them, and all that information has really helped this project expand to, to where we are today. Generally at the, at the two year mark, they're, they're about four inches long. And uh, of course, the, the bigger they get, the better chance of survival they'll have in the wild. What do you notice about the growth rate? Do they grow quicker when they're younger, or does it slow down, or does it take them a while to get going and then it accelerates? So according to the biologists, they're slow growers, and um, usually uh, when they hit sexual maturity, um, anywhere from 17 to 20 years, that's when it, it, it starts to go a little bit faster, but they're a very slow growing species. Now there's also some concern about genetics, keeping genetic strains pure. Uh, where are these, do you know where these turtles are from genetically and, and why would you release them back to those same areas? So there's, there's different um, water tributaries that have uh, different subspecies. There's three different subspecies of um, alligator snapping turtles. And all of these turtles are in the Mississippi drainage system. And, and uh, all of the breeding turtles um, that I've caught uh, came from that drainage system. And all of these hatchlings will be released into that same drainage system. Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries will install a pit tag and uh, usually they, they put it um, right above the tail and under the, the shell and they inject it into, uh, into the turtle and then they'll put a little super glue on there to, to close up and then we'll be able to identify um, what turtle uh, this is and then uh, years down the road if, if they ever catch one of these they can scan the, the pit tag and get the information as far as what year this turtle was released how much it weighed and the measurements of the turtle at the time of the release. When I started this project, I was asked by a couple of biologists to make sure I stay in the drainage system so we don't mix up the subspecies. You know, a few years ago, we were doing a feature with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service on turtles and they explained to us about the different genetics and the importance of keeping those genetics, you know, the same in different areas. Coming up next, this is one of the turtles that has an unknown genetic composition, so we're going to take it out of this spawning population so it doesn't breed with the other known genetics. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D Meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D, where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D.
We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join huntofalifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit huntofalifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference. At Parish Coffee, we wanted to create a coffee brand that people would love to drink every day. A medium roast are, are nice, bright, nutty coffees. Our dark roast coffees are smooth and rich. I think it's important for consumers to recognize that sometimes it, it's your neighbor that you're supporting. People can go to parishcoffee.com to find the entire selection of coffees. This is the Natchitoches National Fish Hatchery. Located in central Louisiana, this U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service complex is home to a variety of brood stocks for freshwater species, including a population of alligator snapping turtles. Probably one of the biggest number of questions we get when people visit the hatchery, asking about the snapping turtles. These turtles were donated by wildlife enforcement agents to the hatchery to establish a captive rearing program, an effort to help repopulate natural waterways in the southern United States. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to raise them in captive environment and reproduce them. We let the turtles spawn on their own and then we'll release their babies. We'll collect their eggs, hatch them out, and then we'll release the young after a couple years of rearing them. And this is all in an effort to try to preclude them from listing. So hopefully we can get enough turtles back out there so they don't become listed. But on this particular day, biologists and hatchery volunteers are on the hunt for two turtles in the pond. We're harvesting our ponds down, trying to find two turtles with unknown haplotypes. Um, the reason is we're actually going to start raising alligator snapping turtles here at the hatchery and uh, we don't want to release any turtles from those progenies or any young from those, those two turtles with unknown haplotypes. We try to figure out obviously the genetic lineage and where they, their parents originally came from and then from there those, those young will be released back into those original waterways. Just trying to keep the same natural genetics in those waterways. This is one of the turtles that has an unknown genetic composition, so we're going to take it out of the spawning population so it doesn't breed with the other known genetics. The biggest I've seen is the ones here, you know, so 180 pounds. And those are pretty large. They take my arm off, no problem. I know that. And it's amazing how fast they are. If you don't hold them in a right place on their shell, it, they're unforgiving. One more time. I think it's that wow factor, you know, people don't realize how big and how old these turtles get. They're a really unique creature. They live for a long time. You know, it, it, it takes them about 15 years, approximately, before they can even get old enough to breed. So they're they're very interesting critter. Coming up next, so these turtles, these are the two-year-old turtles that um, have been tagged and uh, we uh, have a permit from the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and we'll be releasing these turtles into the wild. They don't know what to do, they got all this room now. Yeah. They're free. Yo 
score a touchdown every time you serve Uncle Larry's Ready, Set, Gumbo. Ask for Uncle Larry's Ready, Set, Gumbo at a store near you. Yeah! Delta Marina is Plaquemines Parish fishing one-stop. Get live bait, fuel, ice, tackle, and marine supplies. Then launch into the world's most productive saltwater fishing. Return to the fishing cleaning station, relax in first-class cabins overlooking the bayou, all in Delta Marina's safety video monitored parking lot. Need a fishing charter guide? Delta Marina can hook you up. Cook your catch in your kitchenette or dine in the upstairs restaurant. Visit Delta Marina for a day or a week. Stop in just off Highway 11 down Rosemary Drive in Empire. Visit the deltamarina.com. Continuing this week's episode, we're here in St. Amant, Louisiana, learning about the Louisiana Alligator Snapping Turtle Foundation. But there's another lesson here, one of personal responsibility taken on by Ben and his wife Cody to help revive the endangered population of alligator snapping turtles. We're out here on the Blind River today and we're doing what I call a three-part story. One, we're doing one about the Louisiana Alligator Snapping Turtle. We're also doing one about the man, the Cajun alligator snapping turtle man. And number three, something that's being done environmentally conscious here in the state of Louisiana. Today's a big day for this handful of juvenile alligator snapping turtles. They've been under the care of Ben Nockhan of the Louisiana Snapping Turtle Foundation for over two years. But today, on the Blind River in St. James Parish, we're joining Ben and his wife, Cody, to introduce these docile reptiles to their new home. Ben, why did you pick the Blind River as a release point? It's, it's a, a, a good natural river. Um, the turtles are found in rivers and creeks, and um, we're gonna spread the turtles out throughout southeast Louisiana and uh, we figured we'll, we'll put some in the Blind River. It's also a wildlife management area, the uh, Lake Marpah wildlife management area, so basically it's not gonna get drained, there won't be any developments here, it's gonna be here for a long, long time. For a long time. And turtles right. need a long time. That they do. Let's get them in. Yep, all so right. Let's go swimming. Woo. Here we go. I don't know what to do, they got all this room now. Yeah. They're free. <laughs> I don't like that. There you go. There's one swimming good. The goal is to try and every year we would like to release 500 two-year-old turtles. Um, the problem that we're running into is the space, the tubs, and we, we, uh, we have to drain the water to raise the turtles in, in fresh water. So the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, they offered me a suggestion. Um, they wanted a, a shed built uh, with two uh, very long tubs, like 15 to 16 feet, and we could pump natural fresh water from the canal into one side of the, the tub and let it overflow on the other side of the tub and this way, the, uh, the, the hatchling turtles, for the two years we have them, they would be raised in, in all natural flowing water, just like they would in the wild. And, and that's our goal, that's where we're, we're trying to get to. So the Louisiana Alligator Snapping Turtle Foundation is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we have a Facebook page, and it's called the Louisiana Alligator Snapping Turtle Foundation. And we're looking for anyone who's, who's interested in the project, um, 
Uh, also maybe some corporate sponsors, anyone who feels that this project is a good idea and wants to help expand it and uh, maybe make some uh, contributions where we could get the shed and the, the, the new bigger tubs to raise the baby turtles, um, that, that would be a, a big help to, to expand this project. And uh, I think the best way to get in touch with us is, is our Facebook page. Now we came out here with Bayou Wild for the, the coup de grace, I guess you'd call it. We released these turtles. It's been a two-year journey, actually much longer for Ben Nakan. And you could see a lot of reward in his face and his wife Cody's when these turtles were finally introduced to what has got to be freedom at last for them. Scientists tell us that turtles first showed up on the planet about 200 million years ago and haven't changed much at all. What's that saying? If it isn't broke, don't fix it? Personally, I think and hope any critter that's watched T-Rex come and go, witnessed the arrival of birds and the evolution of mammals to the point of training themselves to use iPhones, will be around for a long, long time. All right, guy, have a happy 98-year life. The greatest feeling is what, what we did today, um, releasing the two-year-old turtles um, into the wild and, and knowing that um, I'm doing a small part um, to try and help stop uh, these turtles from becoming an endangered species. It was very fun to release them and to know that we dug them up and we sat there and we took, you know, we took care of them until they hatched and then we kept them alive for two years and then we were able to release them. And just to know that we did that and nobody else, it, it, it means a lot. You know, I did an unofficial survey one time about turtles and snakes. And I kind of kept a mental note when I'd go on the highway and I'd see a snake crossing the road. People would actually swerve out of their lane to run over it. The turtles, it was just the opposite. If they saw a turtle walking across the road, they'd swerve out of the way to avoid it. People love turtles, snakes, not so much. I think you'll agree with us when we say the Louisiana alligator snapping turtle is a creature that will always have a unique place in the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage of a Bayou Wild future.